Good afternoon. This is Rodney from Our Own Voices with another edition of Our Own Voices TV, bringing you news that you can use and things you may not hear in mainstream media. This is part of the Speak Up Network, and today I'm out at the Henderson Executive Airport with a program that I didn't hear of today, but you will. And this is with Tony Marshall, retired military man, Air Force, I believe. Air Force. How long were you in the service, sir? 22 years. 22 years serving our country. But he didn't just leave the Air Force to enjoy life. He decided to give a little something back. And part of that is giving the experience of aviation to some young folks who may not have otherwise had an opportunity to do so. Tell us a little bit about the program. Okay. After the Air Force, I did uh, 17 years with the United States Airlines. Uh, there I got involved in an organization called the Organization of Black Airline Pilots at the time. We've since changed it to the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals. I'd like to be more inclusive. Uh, and our goal is basically to reach out to students, young people who would not otherwise have had an opportunity to get into the flying world or anything connected with it. Uh, so many of our youngsters just have never heard of it or they've seen airplanes, but it's a dream like I want to be Superman. Yeah, it's a fantasy, it's not realistic. Uh, so you ask yourself, how many people in an inner city know, physically know a pilot, a lawyer, a doctor? Mm -hmm. So when I got hired by United, the first pilot I had met was Bill Norwood, who told me that from that day on, my mission was to go out and recruit youngsters to get them into flying game, make them aware of it. So what OBAP does, the particular program we're having now is called an Aviation Career Enrichment Education. Aviation Career Education Academy, ACE Academy. ACE. And we go to cities throughout the country during the summer when the students are out of school. And we take normally 20 to 25 students, give them a one week exposure to the careers available in aviation. This is the first year we've done it in Las Vegas. Wow. Uh, we've had a very good support outpouring. Uh, we had 15 students. We were hoping for 25, mm -hmm. but we want to get the word out to the community that this is something that's available to the students. So now, what age range were those students and of that week-long program? What did they learn during that okay. phase of it? We look for students ages 13 to 18. Uh, any younger, we try to go in and speak to them in school visits and everything to make them aware. But for the week-long program, it's fairly intense. So we want to get the students get the most out of this. The uh, program, we're near an airport, so uh, you might hear some airplanes. And I'm sure when you were active duty, you called that the sound of freedom, Sound right? of freedom, yes. So uh, we just have one of the airplanes that flew the students this morning departing. The uh, week is a, a week-long program. Day one is generally in processing the students, academics to give them an idea of what's flying about. You know, what makes an airplane fly? What are the rules? What do you need to know? What kind of discipline do you need to participate in flying? So you give them some basic information dealing with um, lift, Lift, thrust, thrust, drag, drag the, gravity. The, the, the basic thing right. that keep those birds in the air, the ones that flap, and also the ones that you throttle up. Yes. We also give them some Bernoulli principles, and this is revolving around the STEM initiative, okay. science, technology, engineering, and math. So we show them why they're learning these subjects in class. You know, how do you compute your speed and distance? How do you figure out how much gas to put in the airplane? Do you have enough to make it where you're going? How much lift do I get out of this wing? What happens if I try to get too much out of it? Uh, just how do I get from point A to point B with navigation? What happens if my computer goes out? How do I estimate? We give them all the history of aviation. Who started it? Who are some of the notables? Minorities in aviation. What do you what do you teach them about some of the minorities in aviation? Because we typically hear about Lindbergh, right? We hear about Amelia Earhart, especially mm -hmm. recently. But what are some of the notable maybe African Americans and African American women who participated in aviation? We start off with Miss Bessie Coleman, and we particularly talk about the struggles and sacrifices she made just to get into it. 
and the role model she now has. We talk about the Tuskegee Airmen, and mm -hmm. most people know what they did to get where they did. Why I was able to fly because of them. And the lesson for the students there is you can do anything you want, no matter what obstacles are put in front of you. So these are the things we like to talk. We talk about Eugene Bullard, who had to leave the country to fly, and then came back, could not get into our own military. Uh, went to France, I Went to France, fought in Ethiopia, fought all over, but was unqualified when he got back to the U.S. Amazing. Mm. So we talk about a lot of the pioneers that have gone. Each of the Tuskegee chapters is generally named after one of the Tuskegee Airmen. We had six students come in from Tuskegee chapters from the West. They all are fully aware of the leaders in their chapters. So a lot of different uh, historical figures that folks have heard about. And then, of course, we go into the stand of the Wright brothers, the mm -hmm. Montgolfier brothers, everybody who had some factor in making aviation possible. So just so they have an appreciation for that. And how long has this program been going on? This program has been going on at least 20 years. Uh, what's some of the results of the program? We often hear so many times about there's this program, there's mm -hmm. that program, and of course we all want them to be successful, but right. in a program like this dealing with aviation, especially from some, some children who this might have been their first opportunity to even touch an airplane, what's some of the results from it? Uh, we did give a pre-test this time and a post-test, and depending on how you want to interpret the results, there was a notable improvement in their scores. Uh, we keep track of our graduates, and the majority of them do go on to college. Some may have been going anyway, but uh, there's also a program in Compton that I'm very familiar with. Where there's a non-profit flight school. And out of that program, we have three students that are now flying commercially. One who is retired at 19 is now 20. Probably the youngest commercial pilot in this country. Really? That came through this program? Came through the program, the program in Compton and this yeah. program. So uh, we've had several students out of the Compton program, solo and other team, by going to Canada. Uh, almost every one of those students has gone to college. We've got several of the Air Force, a lot of world record holders out there. So these are students out the streets of Compton who had no idea they were leaving the airport. So the idea is if you can get the kids exposed to this, and they can see that they're going to school now, that they're doing this, all of a sudden there's a Every one of the kids in this program, when they came back from flying, now wants to do something in the aviation. So this program actually can be a motivator for some children who extreme. may not have even known about this opportunity existing right. with the shortage or the estimated shortage yes. of pilots in the industry. This is a great sort of lead into the, actually getting involved in the aviation. It is, and a number of our students are apprehensive about flying. Not fearful of it, but a bit apprehensive because it's unknown to them. They come back from flying, they've actually handled controls, we send them up with instructors, and they think, this is neat, I can do this. You know, I did great. And they put in practice what we've learned in the classroom. And now you see a new self-confidence in it, which is a key to any program they go to. Mm -hmm. And we tell them, we really don't care if you continue flying in your life, it's nice, but there are several things you have to remember. One, you can't just give up and like you're going to complete the task of land the airplane. You have to think ahead. You have to be disciplined. You have to understand why there are rules. So the reason we use the aviation is because of all those tools that just make them a more well-rounded person. We had uh, a program probably five years ago, and I got a call from a parent that her daughter who had gone through the program was now interviewing for a job and it came down to the last two candidates who were very evenly matched. So the reviewing committee went back, looked at the applications and resumes again, and they noticed Ace Academy on hers. And they asked her what it was about. She explained, and she ended up getting the nod. It was a type. So if you've flown an airplane, you understand what discipline is, self-discipline and following rules. 
So it is definitely something good for the kids to have on their resume. So now this program has been in existence for 20 years. At least. And you've been involved with the program how long? I've been in it since 2001, so 11 years. And how, now how long has it actually been, had some involvement with Las Vegas? This is the first ACE Academy we've done in Las Vegas. Now, back in 1999 and 2001, Tuskegee and OBAP had our conventions here, and we decided to work with the school district, go out into the community, and reach out to some of the students. And that was just the one-time event. We did not keep track of our students. Now we realize we get them excited, but we need to track them. So what we do now is we want to do a week-long program, get all the kids information, track their progress, do the networking for them. And we want to make this a permanent happening in Las Vegas. So for those parents uh, and students alike who might be listening to this, how can they get a hold of you? They can get a hold of me. I can give you my email address, my phone number. Well, let's do and, all that. And we can go to the website. So first, my email address is F as in Frank, the number four, Tony, T-O-N-Y, at AOL.com. Telephone number is 760-247-0456. And you can go to the OBAP website at www.o, B as in boy, A as in apple, P as in Paul, dot org. And you can find out all about this program nationwide. But give us a call, and uh, we'll be more than happy to entertain any questions. Well, before we end, uh, you mentioned you served our country wearing the country's uniform for quite a number of years, yes. 22 years. 22 years flying the F-4. Just so everyone will know, full disclosure, I came into the Air Force, and that was the first aircraft that I worked on. And it wasn't just any F-4, mind you. It was an F-4G Wild Weasel at what I used to call the F-4 base of the world, George Air Force Base. F-4s as far as the eye can see. But it really was a great experience for me coming off the farm and then later from the inner city to be involved with such a unique program as the Wild Weasel program. Give us a little experience about, since you were in 22 years, were you in during the Vietnam era and did you fly F-4s during that period? I did. And I'm sure you know that I didn't bring one back one day. So I uh, did 22 years in the Air Force, most of those in the F-4. Had a fantastic time. Unfortunately, uh, on one mission, we had a problem with the airplane. Ended up bailing out or ejecting. And I ended up being captured and spending nine months in prison. Uh, another great experience. Not that I would volunteer for it, but it turned out to be OK. I learned a lot of lessons there. Uh, the biggest lesson is there is nothing critical in life, and uh, you cannot make up for lost time. So, as you mentioned early in the program, my mission now is to give back. There were so many people who did things to make it easy for me to live my dream and fly. So I want to do that for the students. And uh, for any student out there that wants to fly, please reach out to us, and we'll do whatever we can to get you involved in flying because. It's fun. Wow. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time and service. Pleasure, sir. Thank you. I appreciate uh, all that you've been able to give to this country. And it seems like the country has given you quite a bit, too. And one of those things that people oftentimes forget is the opportunity to take our life experiences and share it with young people. So again, thank you very much. You're well, welcome. That's what our parents taught us. And one thing I want to say, I'm not sure when this will air, but we're having our convention at the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel, July 30th through August 3rd. We have a youth day on August 2nd, and uh, we're inviting about 150 local youth to come out. We've got activities all morning, a luncheon, and then uh, activities in the afternoon. And then for those that missed this five-day camp, on Monday, July 30th, at the North Las Vegas Airport, there will be another ACE Academy. It's a one-day camp. And again, there are approximately 100 slots available. Some have already gone, but get in touch with me. Wow. So this is really a popular program. We are here to reach out to this community. And uh, there's so many assets around here that came out to help us. 
I think they can do this all the time here. So we can make this happen for the kids in this city. Well, again, thank you so much for My your pleasure. time. I appreciate all of your team that supported it because it did take I had a, a great team. A team effort. Would you care to mention some of the folks that helped you? Yes, I will. Mr. Fossil Johannes did most of the work. Uh, Larry Jackson, uh, Fossil is Southwest. Larry Jackson, Southwest and Tuskegee. Isaac Square volunteered all week to do this. Uh, Milan Anderson is a flight attendant for United, trying to be a pilot, really? learning to be a pilot. She came up, Lachey Johnson from Texas Station, and uh, Jeff Berry, local here. Uh, just a tremendous team. Well, it's good to see that you're getting support. It's amazing yeah. what we can do when we work together. You said it. Well, this is Rodney with another edition of Our Own Voices TV. And today we were out at the fabulous, and I must say the fabulous, Henderson Executive Airport. If you haven't had an opportunity to come out and see this fine facility, please do. They also have opportunities for you to, if you have some family and you want to see some areas, maybe get a ride around and see what's going on around the valley. But also get in touch with Tony Marshall and really be involved with this program because this is an opportunity to give something to some children that without your help may not have had that opportunity. So once again, this is Rodney with the Speak Up Network. Talk to you soon.